Today's build is gonna be hardcore. Nuclear core, let's go. Hey, hey, how's it going? Anthony Fro here, Crate Sci-Fi. Well, I have to make a, a ship engine, a nuclear power core, a reactor engine, I don't know. Um, I'm working on my short film right now and running out of money, running out of time. It's always the way, right? So I have two visual effects shots that are like this nuclear core. And the visual effects artists that I'm working with on this project, they're working on other things. And it's, you know, we have our deadline and I'm like, you know what? I have a couple of days. Why don't I just make one and shoot it practically? Never done that before. It's not really a miniature, right? It'll be probably about three feet tall. Whereas like the real thing would probably be like six feet tall. So I found these. So I went shopping. I live in Los Angeles. There's this great scrapyard called Apex. And I'll show you some, some of my visit from there. Just looking for things, found this. So this, I was like, okay, now I have something. Then I went to the Home Depot, got a couple of these, right? So shopping at the Home Depot, looking for this, looking for that, found this. And it's like, okay, I have three of these. Have some Amazon shopping. Got some submersible LED lights, nuclear stickers to remind people that it's nuclear. Bubble maker is gonna have bubbles. How am I gonna have bubbles? What, what am I talking about? And I got, whoa, geez, a fish aquarium. <laughs> this is like a six gallon cylinder aquarium. Now, this is not typical for me because I need this like in 24 hours, 48 hours, but I think it'll be worth it. It'll be cooler because it'll be real practical. I'm gonna film it at the set where I filmed the film because it's still standing. So it'll tie in to everything. So I'm excited to give this a try. This might not be a, as much of a detailed video as I usually do, but I definitely wanted to share this with you. And uh, I'm just gonna keep talking to you because as soon as I stop talking to you, I'm gonna have to start building this thing. It's a little overwhelming. Ah, heck with it, let's go. All right, so I got these heat sink stick things from the cool graveyard called Apex. <laughs> Still gotta clean them up. Um, I'm just cleaning them up because they're gonna be submersed in water, so I just wanna make sure we don't have any major floaters. Um, again, don't know what any of these things are, but like I say all the time, um, it's about the silhouette, right? So it looks right. If it looks right, it is right, I guess. So here I'm just cleaning these up. And um, what I'm doing as I clean that stuff up is it's like now I'm in it, right? I'm, I'm making this now. I'm thinking about it. It's like, I think these go here. So you start to fit things and it's like, yeah, that will fit there. So let's, let's make that happen. So now I just got my Dremel tool and I'm just going to cut some holes in the bottom, this is aluminum, so it's it's not too bad to work with. I've got some tin snips here. And I just wanna start to, to place these pieces in, right? It's always round peg, square hole, you know? Putting two things together that never been put together before and making a new thing. So you have to be flexible. And then there, you know, I could have done it symmetrical, but it made more sense because I was thinking visual, you're going to be looking at it forward. You're never going to see the back of it. So I cheated it so that the three of them went to the front, right? Instead of putting them equidistant around, which you would do if it was an object in the real world, but it's not an object in the real world. It's an object on film and we're only going to be looking at the front of it. So these LEDs are submersible. I mean, the LED technology is just crazy, like how inexpensive it is. Like I buy all these LED lights all the time for like $4, $5, and they come with their own remotes. These ones are submersible. I, I, I don't recall at the top of my head, but it was not more than $10, right? And then when I'm on set, I have an idea of the color that I want, but maybe if it's not working, we can tweak it a little. So this is great. And they're submersible, right? So just looking at that, that's like, okay, this is going to work. This is definitely going to work. It looks like something. So now I have this fish tank. This was, um, this is what sort of saved the day. I went to a lot of supply stores and online and to get an acrylic tube this size was insane it was like three hundred dollars and i almost had to just forget the whole thing and then sort of in the 11th hour i was like oh wait a second one of these fish tanks 
And then here on the top of the fish tank, back to Home Depot, is a flower pot. And it's got those little feet on it, so when you water your plant, it doesn't drown. And that just makes it look like, okay, this is a thing. Put the hat on there. <laughs> And always test, right? So you're always testing. Whenever you have electronics in your building, you have to check them constantly. Because what will happen is you'll get to the end of the build and then that electronic you put in the beginning of the build all of a sudden doesn't work. So here, these are um, two pieces that I got from from Apex, from the, from the, the scrapyard. No idea what they are but they look like something. And then I'm hot gluing them. I got a bunch of hot glue from this company, which I'll mention later. Uh, big shout out to them. So this is like vacuum hose. So just hoses. Uh, I think you've seen me do this recently on the channel. I think I did this with the, um, with the, uh, with the control panel, with the computer board there. It's, it's the um, aluminum tape, right? So the theory is, I'll repeat it here, is, the electronics are super simple. I'm just lighting up a light. I need it to work, in this case, for three hours on set. So you fill that with aluminum tape, and then I'm just gonna bounce light around in there, and it's gonna glow, and it's gonna be great. Is it? Is it gonna be a nuclear reactor for real? No. Is it gonna light up and look cool for, you know, an hour on set? Sure will. So here I got my fat Velcro. I love my fat Velcro, and again, like I said, with testing the lights, I try not to make things permanent, especially when I'm I'm building something that I'm going to be using in a couple of days, right? So I'm building this and we got to bring it to set, you know, in 24 hours. If I go gluing and screwing everything in, inevitably you're going to get on set and you're going to want to move a light and it's all glued in. So as many places where you can make things uh, adjustable, right? And Velcro is your friend with that. Or if I'm hot gluing it, I make sure to do a hot glue connection that I can just pop off. That's not like permanent. And then here I'm dropping in hoses because I have, um, if you're familiar with fish tanks, see there's this like, that's a bubble wand that goes on the bottom of a tank and it makes it bubble. So I'm going to use that to give some life to my nuclear power source here. So I have these um, air hoses, you know, totally just fish tank technology. And I'm just covering it with this, uh, with this plastic tubing that I use a lot. That's for um, covering up cables on your computer. So just trying to tie everything together. And then I got this black hot glue, which looks nice. So it's going to be in there. And then here I just put some foam on the base because I realized it's going to be filled with water and that was just like a plastic base and I figured it would crush it. So here's the Evil Ted Greaveleys. I love these. Um, these trays, I don't think you can get them at Michael's anymore. So I found them on eBay, uh, Evil Ted. So when I'm doing castings, I make these Greaveleys and they're just great. I talk about them all the time on this channel. Why? Because they're so awesome and so useful, right? If something works, I lean into it. So I got the Greeblies. Just going to put a couple knobs and dials on there. So here, just got some 220. Just going to tooth this up so that I'll accept paint. Probably just going to paint it with like a primer. And then Surebonder. So shout out to Surebonder. They sent me a lot of hot glue. Um, I use this for the whole build for this movie. So it's really good stuff. And it's it's kind of geared towards cosplay so it has like silver black and and traditional clear so definitely check them out and then here with these hoses again broken record these are going on here right now because i'm like oh the hoses would look good up here and they fit over those nubs that's the only if they didn't fit over those nubs you'd be seeing me glue something else there to the top, right? It's just whatever works. Don't make it look bad. But if it adds value, if it adds interest, put it on there, right? It adds production value. And then here, I'm just laying down just a piece of tape just so that these knobs are have a chance of going on <laughs> somewhat even. <laughs> and yeah, it does look good. Like, I, I can't tell you how much I love those Evil Ted Greeblies. 
All right, so now just some primer, just some black primer. And then here I just made up some stencils. I, I'm going to weather these off a lot, but I just want to put some like nuclear stencils on there. There's like a call sign from the ship. Um, again, just so that it's nuclear. And, you know, I'm painting this right now yellow, so it stands out, but I'm definitely going to bury this in weathering. I just want it to be there subliminally. Maybe you'll see it, maybe you won't. But it's just a nice little touch that it's there, right? And and like I say, it's all about the layers. Like just like that. I mean, please don't ever leave it like that. Uh, that looks bad. But you'll see. We're we're gonna put a lot of a lot of weather, a lot of gunk on that. So now I'm just doing a good old fashioned dry brush, just a little silver paint. Just kiss it, touch it, zip zip zip. I always overdo it. I'm aware of that, but it works. It's fine because then I take it down. So then here, you'll see it's about the layering, right? So then it's like, I'll probably do a little dry brush over that yellow. It's gonna make it look like it was scratched. And it's starting to look, starting to look, you know, it gets like that cast iron look, which is good, all right? So now you wanna hit that with some clear. Always clear between the weathering coats, otherwise, you know, you end up making mud. But when you put clear in between your stages, it builds and you could take off and not take everything off so here i'm just doing a good old black wash over everything like i said i'm going to tamper down that yellow um by the time we're done with this it'll, it'll be barely even legible which is what i want and then the, i always do the the sienna last because i like the way um it gives like a rust look and i typically don't water that down i typically just do like little pokes with my brush and then when you when you rub it with a towel you get this nice like rushed sheen and then another coat of clear all right just doing what i said i would do so then here's my movie paints my nicotine sprays my dulling sprays i love these i'll put links to these um you can't get them on amazon so uh, people always ask me about these, so I'll put links. So you see, that's a brand new fish tank, right? So let's fix that up. So dulling spray is exactly, you know, as advertised. You see there, it just dulls it down. And all these sprays, what's great about them is they're water-based, right? So now I'm doing the nicotine spray. The nicotine is my favorite. And these are the only paints that when they drip, they look great. And you can see it's starting to look, yeah, all right? Starting to look like some kind of basement monstrosity, which is what I'm going for. So now just some water. I don't have a sink in my shop, so I always keep a little water. And then now, because I know I'm gonna be filming all those guts in there, I just do like a little clear window, almost making like a little frame, right? It's like I'm focusing your eye onto the stuff that I'm gonna drop in there. And again, like I said, testing the lights always, cause right, you could get to this stage and there's a pretty good chance that all of a sudden things will stop working. <laughs> but that's looking good, like I'm, I'm really happy with that. Like I, I, I find when, when I'm sort of under the gun, I usually end up getting a good look. And that's actually what I was going for. So here we are on set, right? These are the beauty shots, I'm gonna give it to you. So there, uh, that's the DP John and we did a couple takes without water in it because you never know and then there it is in all its glory yeah yeah really happy with that right and in the background there guess what those are <laughs> it's funny <laughs> yeah that was a new thing for me I'm glad I did that typically in that situation I would get some kind of 3d asset and do some inexpensive sort of um either with after effects or now most people use blender and just sort of shoot a plate of that room and then put a 3d element in there but you know uh, people become more and more aware of of you know of of how the bread is made right so people kind of recognize that and i thought well i have visual effects out in space with spaceships and 
kind of when you go outside of the ship, you're in outer space and it's visual effects and it kind of makes sense. You just sort of suspend your disbelief and you go along with it. So the film is finished. Like I said, you'll probably be seeing it in a couple months. It's doing festivals right now. But let's take a look at um, what we made in the actual finished film. I've got my eye on you. Gunny. Just Z. Readings confirm the core is in fact nuclear. How about that? I mean, it makes me really happy to see like practical effects. Like that's something I'd like to do more of. It's a little more effort. But I don't know, I think I'm leaning more in that direction, sort of do as much practical as possible, and then enhance it with visual effects. But hopefully you found that useful. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, love to read the comments, and be sure to check out the merch shop. We got hats, shirts. Buying these really helps the channel. And remember, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. <laughs>